All right, it is almost go time. We're eight weeks along for Miss Pepper. Just one week to go if she makes it that long. So your girl will give birth, if you did progesterone testing, she will give birth. Well, even if you didn't do progesterone testing, she will give birth 63 days plus or minus a day from when she ovulated or 65 days plus or minus a day uh, from her LH surge. Now, if it's a large litter or a very small litter, that can throw those numbers off a bit. But as a general rule, that's what will happen. So you want them to stay in there as long as possible. Well, as long as possible without going over. You don't want to over overshoot the due date, but you don't want them to be too premature. You want to get to at least day 58 uh, so that their lungs are developed and their sucking reflex is fully developed. That gives them their best chance at making it if they come early. Uh, you don't want them to come too early. You don't want them to come too late. You want them to come right when they should come, right at that 63 days from ovulation, uh, plus or minus a day. So uh, this week, you can feel the babies kicking. You can see the babies kicking. One of Pepper's little guys, uh, it's on her other side, right down in here. Every time I stick my hand there, he is kicking away at poor Peppy. <laughs> and she is just sleeping, 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 resting up for these guys. You want to make sure that you have everything prepared for your girl, everything prepared for your whelping area, everything prepared for yourself for when the time comes. Uh, your gas fueled up with car in case you need to go anywhere. Uh, if there's an emergency situation, you need to have your reproductive vet or your regular veterinarian or your emergency veterinarian or all three uh, numbers ready to go. And uh, you also want to start taking your dog's temperature this week. So twice a day, basically every 12 hours, you just do morning and night, you want to take her temperature. A dog's normal body temperature is between 101 and 102.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, put it going, Pep. Got something to say? But about 12 to 24 hours before she's going to go into labor, that's going to drop down to about 98, 99 degrees. And again, that, that's not always hard and fast. I mean, that will happen, but uh, sometimes it can go back up. Sometimes you can miss it. So just because your dog's temperature isn't 98 degrees doesn't mean that she's not about to give birth. You may have just missed uh, the window where you could have uh, seen it. Um, your girl will start nesting this week, so make sure you have her whelping box or whelping area ready to go. And we'll show you her... We'll show you what her belly looks like this week, and then we'll show you all her stuff is all set up and ready for her. Okay, can we see your belly? Can we see your belly? Don't want me to see your belly. Come on. There we go. So these are ready for the babies. We've got lots of mammary action. <laughs> they are so full. You can this does not do it justice, but I mean, she is just she is full and ready for the baby. So. We'll show you her area, and we'll take her temperature so you can see how that goes too. Okay, this is Pepper's whelping box. It is ready to go. We don't have it too comfy, not padded, no heating pads in there yet or anything, because if she delivers in here, obviously we're going to have a bit of a mess, so we just have towels ready to go. Newspaper. Right next door we have our puppy warmer incubator. This is literally a lifesaver if you need it. Uh, we have an oxygenator over there. My favorite thing about this setup is that uh, you've got this little guy that's shooting oxygen into your incubator and if you've got a puppy that comes out gasping or is struggling to breathe, you can put this right over their little nose and mouth and get oxygen directly to them. It is amazing. So uh, we've got that set up right next to her, right next to her whelping box. Uh, we are also prepared if the night gets long got the couch in the bedroom ready to go so we can hang out uh, gate to put up for the other dogs these are sides of the welcome box it grows uh, as the puppies get bigger if we need to and then we also have uh, little slats that will fill in here you can see it's got uh, grooves so we can just slide them in there as the puppies grow my dad built this much cheaper than, uh, than buying something online and it fits our purposes really well. So we've got the TV set up ready to go and then we have supplies over here. So this is a crate that uh, some of our other guys sometimes will sleep in at night, our puppies, when we're training them. Uh, so what I've actually done is I took two of the panels that we'll use for the whelping box, just laid them on top of the crate 
and that is where we put our whelping supply. So we've got some Doc Roy's Healthy Bones for calcium. Uh, you can also give your girls Tums, vanilla ice cream, yogurt, cottage cheese, um, some good calcium once the puppies start coming. So once the puppies start coming, that's when the calcium comes into play. We usually do uh, a little shot of oral cow um, in between each puppy. Again, once the puppies start coming, you want to wait to start doing that calcium once they start coming. We've got uh, clamps and some blunt scissors here for uh, their umbilical cords. So what we'll do is we'll tie them off with some floss. Definitely want some floss. Uh, we have alcohol, alcohol prep pads to clean off our utensils in between puppies. And then what we will do is we'll take our uh, cotton swabs, get some iodine, and we will iodine those umbilical cords. These are really nice if you can find any of these. They are pre-iodined uh, swabs, so they're just already going to package. You don't have to deal with the mess of the iodine swab. This is something new I just found this year. Um, it is also for newborn animal umbilical cord care. So we're going to give that a try this year. I'll take the top off, do a cotton swab in there. I'm only going to try this on one, maybe two puppies since we've never used it before and just see how it works. But that might be a good option too. We also have some blood stop powder just in case uh, that's needed. We've got over here, these are for if we have any puppies that are struggling. Just a little tiny, tiny, uh, I've had this literally for years. So that's why uh, there's hardly any of it used. Just a tiny little bit of caro syrup on the roof of their mouth can help get them going if they're struggling. The same thing for love, love, love our high calorie nutritional gel from Tomlin. Uh, Nutridrops um, does about the same thing as like your nutritional gel in your caro. I just have a variety of things. Um, so if a puppy's struggling, we can try different things if we need to. We've got gas relief in case your puppies uh, get gas, just a tiny bit of that. This is going to sound kind of crazy. But another great thing to have on hand if you have a struggling puppy and maybe you don't have any of this other stuff available, you can get just a little bit of your cake decorating gel and just put a tiny drop of this on the roof of their mouth and that'll really sometimes uh, get them going. If you've got a puppy that's dying, you know, you're, you're not going to hurt it more most likely uh, so you want to do everything you can to get that puppy going we have these these are like a rough uh, edged glove they're they're soft but they're like grippy so if anybody gets stuck we have to help anybody out we can grab on to the puppy while still having our hands covered and have some grip on there as opposed to like your nitro gloves there's no grip in these um, but we will use those as well as the day goes on purell for us for hand sanitizing as we go fortiflora for mom and then obviously puppy identifiers sometimes we'll use a sharpie to mark them at first sometimes we have little doggy nail polish we've got puppy collars but we won't put them on them for the first couple of days we've got the uh Call it a nose sucker. You can suck all that goop out of their nose and their mouth when they arrive. And then last but not least, very importantly over here, we have the baby scale for weighing them. And we weigh twice a day when they first arrive for the first week. Second week, weigh once a day, just to make sure everybody is gaining. And of course our thermometer, we're taking everybody's temperature as needed. And uh, we're gonna go take mom's right now and show you uh, where she's at. Okay, so we've got our thermometer ready to go. That pepper sniff it. Okay, uh, we've got some Vaseline on the end there. Petroleum jelly doesn't have to be name brand to help get in. And uh, you want to have that on hand too in case any puppies uh, get stuck. You can help help them out a little bit with some petroleum jelly. So we'll get this going here and see what the temp is. Okay, so puppies temp 99.3. So we might be closer than we thought for this. And uh, we're gonna keep an eye on. We're gonna keep an eye on things. Not that. All right. Settling for a little nap, we'll go for a little walk, and show you guys what our belly looks like as we're walking. At eight weeks, exercise for Pepper looks like walking down the driveway like waddling down the driveway and just lay it in the sunshine wagging her tail get that good tail exercise going and then walking back up so it's not nearly as much as we've been doing but still gets her out gets her walking but completely at her own pace 
and not nearly as far. So we were doing about half a mile a day. Uh, but then in week eight, we cut it down to where oops, hey Bill, it's closer to about a quarter mile a day. And that's more than enough for her at this stage. We don't want to overexert her by any means. We don't want anything strenuous, but we still want to get her some exercise. Just loves chewing on that ball. Puppy's coming soon. See you next week with puppies.